Hello. Good evening. I come from Britain, which is home of the corrupt politician. <laughs> and so what I did was I toured around the country and I asked audiences to put forward policy suggestions to make the world a better place. Each night we discussed these policies, we would choose our favourites and we created the People's Manifesto. And tonight, Australia, I share with you some of the policies we created to change the world. Policies like they should ban handles on push doors. <laughs> we had a policy that all ATM machines should have a gamble button. <laughs> but one of my favourites was that models should be chosen at random from the electoral register. <laughs> this is a fantastic policy because it completely rewrites our narrow-minded visions of what is beautiful and erotic. Because it means if you're an advertiser, you can no longer say, I want a skinny woman with large tits. You just have to say, I want a model. And you get whoever is pulled out of the register. <laughs> you could get a bloke. You could get a bald bloke, you could get whatever. And the great thing is, the people who are chosen as models would be informed of their assignments in the same way as we're told about jury service. <laughs> so my dad would be sitting there at the breakfast table with a letter going, oh, fucking hell, I'm doing Calvin Klein. <laughs> I've got to pull my pants out and fucking tie a bird. We had lots of policies about social justice as well. One of the policies was anyone found guilty of a homophobic hate crime should serve their entire sentence in drag. <laughs> and in four British cities, they voted to legalise gay marriage. And we should do this. We should do this. I know some people say, no, Mark, they can't legalise gay marriage because that is unnatural. No. Long life milk is unnatural. <laughs> Two people loving each other is natural. No, we can't legalise gay marriage because it will undermine the institution of marriage. No. The institution of marriage is undermined by married people fucking people they're not married to. <laughs> And some people say they use religion and the Bible to justify... No, we can't have that, Mark, because it says in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, if a man sleeps with another man, as with a woman, they both shall be an abomination. Leviticus 20, verse 13. But Leviticus also says... If a woman menstruates, she shall be kept separate for seven days, and on the eighth day she shall cleanse herself by sacrificing a pigeon. <laughs> Leviticus 15, verse 29. <laughs> that pigeon shall have its neck wrung by a priest, and the feathers scattered to the east side of the altar, and the pigeon then burnt upon the altar itself. Leviticus 1, 13 through 16. Despite these clear instructions, <laughs> I have yet to see Christians campaigning so that Tampax provide a pigeon with every bat. <laughs> if you're going to take this seriously, you should be burning up pigeons every single day. The church should smell like a grease fire in Nando's. <laughs> And if there are any Christians who find this offensive, all I'd say to you is this. If you want to justify your bigotry with religion, don't be surprised if it bites you back in the fucking ass. <laughs> See you at the trade hall. Good night. Whoa, Mark Thomas. Our kids, our next act has been on Letterman, Conan, Fallon, and now he's here at the Palais, the fabulous Kamel Nanjiani. Hey, Melbourne! Uh, it is wonderful to be here. It truly is. It's my first time here. Uh, great, great city. I used to live in New York, in uh, Brooklyn. 
scariest place I've ever been to. And I grew up in fucking Pakistan. <laughs> and it wasn't just like violent scary, it was also like weird scary. Like I found a guy on my street, this is true, I found a guy on my street catching pigeons with his bare hands <laughs> and stuffing them into his pockets. <laughs> like some sort of horrible reverse magician. <laughs> and I'm the only one staring at him. Everyone else is just walking by, like, mm, there's old pigeon pockets. <laughs> Maybe just his wife was having her period. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. I'll tell you a personal story. Uh, I'll tell you about the first time I remember crying. I was five years old. It's not the first time I cried. It's my first memory of crying. I was five. I was watching an animated version of an ugly duckling. Oh my God, all these pretty ducklings are so mean to this one ugly duckling, you know? And I felt like an ugly duckling as a kid. I remember just like crying, bawling as hard as I've ever, just like tears down my face. I went to my mom for comfort and to make me feel better, my mom didn't say, you know, beauty on the outside does not matter, Kamel. It's beauty on the inside that makes a person. She didn't say that. To make me feel better, my mom said, Ducks can't talk. <laughs> Plus, these ducks don't even exist. Look at it. Someone clearly just drew that. <laughs> Stop crying, Kumel. They're not real. Which is a horrible way to handle that situation. My parents let me watch like the weirdest shit that they should not have let me watch. Like when I was eight, they let me rent The Elephant Man. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a superhero movie. <laughs> You know, like Batman, Elephant Man! He has the strength of 20 men! No, he doesn't. He has the sadness of 20 men. <laughs> Do you guys know that movie, the guy with the face? They're trying to get the girl to kiss him, and he's like, I'm not an animal! Fucking devastating! <laughs> that movie took something from me. <laughs> like, I'm sure I lost the ability to smell rain during that movie. <laughs> I turned to my mom and I was like, thank God movies are fake, huh? I should actually know this one is real. <laughs> it's an actual disease anybody could get at any time. Good night. <laughs> Horrifying. You know how some people are too stupid of opinions? You know what I mean? Like they haven't earned the right to have opinions. I'll give you an example. I was talking to this guy, uh, background, I was raised Muslim. Hold for applause. <laughs> it's fine, keep it. <laughs> I was raised Muslim and I was talking to this guy who was, he was never Muslim, you know? And we were talking about the gender inequality in Saudi Arabia, the gender inequality in Saudi Arabia. And he looks at me, I swear, he looks at me and he's like, it's not really their fault, Kumail. The Quran says women can't drive. <laughs> yeah, pretty fucking sure the Quran never said that. <laughs> Because if the Quran had said women can't drive cars 1,400 years ago, I would be at the mosque right now. So would all of you. If 1,400 years ago, if 1,400 years ago, the Quran was like, someday there will be a metallic box that will carry you wherever you want. This we predict. And it will have four wheels and you will put gas and it tells you how fast you're going and you have a thing to control it and women shouldn't drive it. <laughs> I would be like, I know two things for fucking sure. Islam is the one true religion, and women shouldn't drive. I'm glad you guys laughed at that. Otherwise, it sounds like I'm giving a horrible speech. Islam is the one true religion. Women shouldn't drive. Sounds much worse. There's this new drug in the US called Cheese. Like, that's the street name of it, Cheese. I'm not making it up. That's what they call it. I saw all these news reports. They were like, there's a new drug. It's called cheese. Kids in the Midwest are doing it. It's an epidemic. It's a new drug. It's an epidemic. It's a new drug. So I looked up what cheese is. And cheese is a mix of cheese is cough medication and heroin. <laughs> so really, it's heroin. <laughs> it's mostly heroin. <laughs> heroin is doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> It's not a new drug, mostly heroin. I can't just sprinkle heroin on pancakes and go, I've made a new drug! I call it pan shakes. 
Don't forget the special shake sauce. It's just maple syrup and heroin. It's not a new drug. I think the last actual new drug was uh, crystal meth, which you had to make in your bathtub. And if you fucked up while you were making it, everything would explode and you would die. That's how dangerous that drug is. Just trying to make it can kill you. And you make it just from shit you get at the store. To make cheese, you still need to find heroin. <laughs> just do the heroin. That's my message to you tonight. Just do the heroin, guys. Thank you.